So we've talked about the physiology of potassium, and we talked about those four factors that regulate potassium at the principal cell. I want you to remember those as we go through our different mechanisms for hypokalemia. So I like to group things into boxes, and let's talk about our first mechanism of how patients get hypokalemic, and that is transcellular shift. So there are a couple of things that can cause shift of potassium from that extracellular fluid compartment to the intracellular fluid compartment. Now remember, when you have transcellular shift, total body potassium is the same. We are simply shifting from the extracellular compartment to the intracellular compartment. Things that you need to be aware of that do this are insulin. Insulin promotes potassium entry into the cell by stimulating that sodium potassium ADPase. We also have shift of potassium from ECF to the ICF through beta adrenergic agonists, so things like catecholamines or drugs that act by beta-2 receptors, things like terbutaline or albuterol, will increase potassium entry into the cell by increasing that activity at the sodium potassium ATPase. So when a patient has alkalosis, Protons will leave the cell in order to lower that extracellular pH, but we have to maintain electroneutrality, so potassium will then enter the cell in exchange, and patients can become hypokalemic because of that. And then finally, there's an entity termed hypokalemic periodic paralysis. This is characterized by acute attacks precipitated by sudden movement of potassium into cells. Now, when that happens, it can lower the plasma potassium as low as 1.5 to 2.5 milliequivalents per liter. So you can see why patients can get paralyzed from this. It's precipitated by things that would actually cause transcellular shift. That means rest after exercise. Stress, what happens when we're stressed? We're actually activating beta adrenergic receptors. And high carbohydrate meals. So again, high carbohydrate meals are going to induce insulin insulin secretion, and insulin uptakes potassium into that cell. Now, this can be due to familial reasons. So it's an autosomal dominant disorder where mutations are in the dihydropyridine calcium channel and skeletal muscle. It's actually quite rare. A little bit more common would be the acquired form, which is typically associated with thyrotoxicosis. Now, your board books and your STEP, uh, your USMLE exams will like to typically tell you that these are predominantly young Asian males, but I do want you to be on the lookout because this can happen to anybody in the population. My last patient who had hypokalemic periodic paralysis was a 22-year-old young college student who was Caucasian who was just celebrating his ending of his midterms. He went out to a pub and was enjoying some beer and pretzels, and at 3 o'clock in the morning, he woke up paralyzed from the waist down. So in going to the uh, emergency medical services, brought him to the hospital. His potassium was 1.9, and a very astute provider checked thyroid function tests on him, and sure enough, he had Graves' disease, so he was thyrotoxic. And by treating his Graves' disease, we were able to ameliorate his hypokalemic periodic paralysis. So I just want you to be on the lookout when it comes to this particular disorder, because it does exist.